previously on The Account. I can assure you that the men gathered around this table are the best in advertising. I need your firm to create campaigns targeting 10 significant social and religious issues. To what end do you want these ad campaigns designed? To see our culture so swayed by each campaign that gradually and unknowingly people embrace my plan for moral change. You mean immoral change? I don't believe that anyone around this table thinks we'll ever see the day when society embraces such outrageous proposals. Create the campaigns. I will do the rest. Shall we get down to business? Business of marriage, right? <laughs> Why would the client want to discredit the institution of marriage? I mean, I don't know about you boys, but I like it just the way it is. Says the unhappily married man. I'm happily married. That's what your wife believes. <laughs> I'm happy. Says the newlywed. This meeting is not about us. It's about our next campaign to make people comfortable with the idea that marriage is not for everybody. Or for anybody. So as I see it, we need to talk about two things. One, that perhaps before you take the plunge, you should try out the arrangement first. You mean live together? Yep. Oh, my parents would have disowned me. And two, secondly, we make divorce more acceptable. I don't even know anyone who's divorced. Oh, perhaps you will. I said I'm happily married, but if Janet and I had taken the chance to try it out first, well, maybe. You wouldn't have married her? So what obstacles are we dealing with here? Marriage is an institution. A sacred institution. But marriages are licensed by the state, so let's take the sacred out of it. Well, then what would you have? Freedom. Choices. Liberation. Options. Fewer problems. True. Uh, marriage certainly is no cakewalk. That's what we try to sell. Marriage is a big risk. Let's give people a no-risk marriage plan. Take a test drive with the one you love. Or trade the old model in for the new. Uh, women will never go for that. So we go for the women with something like, marriage is not a cakewalk. So sample the mix first. Gentlemen, I think we have our next ad. To the client. No, it's a marriage. To the day marriage is obsolete. And now, here is the host of Turning Point, Dr. David Jeremiah. Hello, I'm David Jeremiah, and welcome to Turning Point. Have you noticed that the institution of marriage is no longer held in high regard? Marriage is the subject of this fourth message in a new Turning Point series called, I Never Thought I'd See the Day, Culture at the Crossroads. A series about upheavals in our culture and world that I never thought I would witness. One of those dramatic changes is that marriage has become an option in our culture. In today's message called, I never thought I'd see the day when marriage would be obsolete, you'll be shocked to discover exactly how marriage is being redefined, even discarded by more and more couples. When God's fundamental building block for human society is made optional, the resulting foundation cannot support the kind of society we want for ourselves and our children. You'll learn all the details on today's very special edition of Turning Point. It appears that Western civilization is in accelerating decline, but are we headed toward the end of our culture and society? In his newest book, I Never Thought I'd See the Day, Culture at the Crossroads, Dr. David Jeremiah reveals why our culture is in moral and social decay and what we can do to reverse its downward spiral. Receive your copy of I Never Thought I'd See the Day for your gift of any amount to Turning Point. And delve deeper with Dr. Jeremiah's I Never Thought I'd See the Day set, yours for a gift of $75 or more. Inside I Never Thought I'd See the Day book and series study guide, along with Dr. Jeremiah's newest teaching series on audio CD. Receive I Never Thought I'd See the Day book or study set from Turning Point. Call or click today.
I never thought I'd see the day when marriage would be deemed obsolete, but that day is arriving and perhaps has already arrived. More and more couples are choosing to treat marriage as optional. Back in 1977, fewer than one million American opposite-sex couples were living together unmarried. But in 2007, that number rose to 6.4 million or almost 10% of the opposite sex couples living together in America. So when we discern the meaning of marriage, we have to understand that much of the meaning of marriage has been lost in the culture in which you and I live today. Let's take a moment and depreciate the magnitude of marriage because that's what's going on in our culture. Is marriage becoming obsolete? I'm not the only person asking this question. The Pew Research Center, in conjunction with Time Magazine, got some shocking answers from the American public in a 2010 survey. When asked if marriage was becoming obsolete, nearly 40% of those who responded said yes. And among those in the traditional marrying age, 18 to 29, the number was four points higher at 44%. In other words, 44% of those who are in the marrying category believe that marriage has become obsolete in our culture. But the more important question for us to ask today is, what are the effects of the growing obsolescence of marriage? It's always easy to make changes in our culture for the sake of convenience or preference. It's not always so easy to foresee the impact that those changes will make at the risk of being accused of oversimplifying a very complex issue, consider this one example before we do anything else. God places great importance